Hi, my name is Dan Stair of Daniel's Training Services, and I provide training and consulting services for the management of waste and for the transport of hazardous materials. There's going to be a link to my website at the conclusion of this video, and you can always call me or contact me if you have a question about these regulations. The purpose of this video is to identify and explain the four federal universal wastes identified by the US EPA. So first off, what is a universal waste? A universal waste is part of EPA's hazardous waste regulations. And it is actually an option. It's a deregulation. It's a way that the EPA allows you to take something that is first a hazardous waste and then allows you the option to manage it as a universal waste under a lower level of reg regulation. Now, um, there's all sorts of requirements that go along with that, but the key thing, the most important thing is that in order to be a universal waste, it must first be a hazardous waste. It must either display a characteristic of a hazardous waste or it must be a listed hazardous waste. Next, I'm going to show you, I'm going to identify the four different universal wastes uh, of the US EPA. Oh. Okay, so we have four different universal wastes identified by the US EPA. They must first be a hazardous waste before they can be a universal waste. And the first universal waste is batteries. Now, a battery is defined as one or more electrically connected electrochemical cells designed to receive, store, or deliver energy. So that's the definition. We all know what a battery is. A universal waste battery includes, but is not limited to, a gel or solid lead acid battery. So this is not a liquid lead acid battery. This is a gel battery that contains lead. And there are other forms of these. This as well is another gel lead acid battery. It also includes nickel cadmium or nickel metal hydride batteries, like this little guy right here. And lots of power tools and devices um, used to be powered by the nickel metal hydride batteries. Uh, they have been replaced in a lot of ways by different sizes of lithium batteries, another kind of universal waste. These happen to be what are called button cell batteries. They're used in small electronics and things like that. There are much bigger lithium batteries. They power all of our stuff nowadays, from cell phones to laptops to all sorts of different things. Um, those as well, because they could be a hazardous waste, can be managed as a universal waste. And there's other kinds of batteries. There's sodium, uh, there's uh, mercury, silver, uh, there's all sorts of different batteries that may be managed as a universal waste. Interestingly, the universal waste regulations, the definition of a universal waste battery, does not include a liquid or lead acid battery like this one. These are actually have different regulations. So in the federal regulations at 40 CFR part 266 subpart G, there's an exemption for liquid lead acid batteries that are being reclaimed. So that is not a universal waste. Another battery that is not a universal waste is this one, an alkaline battery. The, and the reason for that is there's nothing in an alkaline battery that would make it a hazardous waste. There's a lot of confusion on that, but there isn't. So uh, your, whether it's a double A or a nine volt or a six volt or whatever, a C, a D, those are not a hazardous waste and therefore, by definition, cannot be a universal waste unless your state um, allows for it. Um, and many times people uh, manage these as a universal waste, and that's just fine. So you probably should check with your state on that one. But that really does it then for the universal waste batteries. Next, I'm going to talk to you about universal waste recalled or canceled pesticides. Go. Yeah. Okay, now, another type of universal waste is one that's known as recalled or canceled pesticides. Now, before I get your hopes up, that particular type of universal waste is not for your household uh, uh, pesticides and fertilizers and herbicides.
sides and all kinds of stuff like that. It's not made for those, okay? Unfortunately, this particular type of universal waste is really designed more for the industry. It's just, first off, it's for a pesticide, which, as some of these are, a substance or a mixture intended to destroy, prevent, or repel any pest. It also includes a plant a regulator, defoliant, or desiccant, um, also an animal or drug or an animal feed that contains a pesticide. But again, that's a pesticide, but this particular universal waste only applies to those pesticides that are one of these two following things. One, they're stocks of a suspended or canceled pesticide that are part of a recall, either voluntary or mandated by the government, or stocks of unused pesticides that are collected and managed as part of a waste pesticide collection program. So really, this particular universal waste is not designed for uh, businesses or industries who have these pesticides around. It's designed for the manufacturers of the pesticides or for a community or some organization that might have a collection program. Uh, but other than that, it, it really is specific in its application. So next, I'm going to be talking to you about mercury-containing equipment. Go. Okay, now I'm going to talk to you about the, the third type of federal EPA universal waste, and that is mercury-containing equipment. I don't have any examples of that here. Uh, in this day and age, it's kind of harder to find those. But back 60s, 70s, um, if you have a building of that age, it's quite possible you have uh, building components or equipment that includes uh, liquid metallic mercury. It would meet the definition of mercury-containing equipment, which is a device or part of a device that contains elemental mercury as part of its function. It's what makes it function. So we're talking liquid metallic mercury here. So it includes thermostats and thermometers and any kind of heat sensing or regulating device, uh, switches, gauges, manometers, or back in the day, again, there were all sorts of different uh, devices that functioned using liquid metallic mercury. What it doesn't include are batteries and lamps that contain mercury, because they are managed elsewhere under different universal waste regs. And it also doesn't include straight up elemental mercury. That's not a universal waste. And it also doesn't include broken mercury-containing devices. So if you have a mercury th uh, thermostat or a thermometer that you break, well, and you clean it up, well, now you're going to have a hazardous waste. So next, what I'm going to identify is the fourth and final, at least currently, the fourth and final US EPA universal waste. And that is going to be lamps. Go. OK. The fourth and final universal waste identified by the EPA is lamps. Now, that has a definition. Lamp is a bulb or tube of an electric lighting device. Typically, it's any bulb or tube that's used to generate radiant energy. So, um, there's a bunch of different uh, lamps or bulbs that can be managed as universal waste. It includes fluorescent, like I have here in this uh, in this device here um, is an example of a fluorescent tube. We're pretty familiar with them, right? There's a lot of those around. It also could be high intensity discharge, neon, mercury vapor, high pressure sodium, metal halide lamps, uh, possibly even incandescent. Um, depending on your state and its interpretation, an incandescent lamp or bulb could be a universal waste. Um, and other uh, mercury lamps. Now, uh, one particular type, oh, and I have examples here, these are the CFLs, right, the compact fluorescents that are so common. These contain mercury. These would be a hazardous waste at disposal that you have the option to manage as a universal waste. There is some confusion on this type of lamp, the green cap ones. Uh, these still do contain a little bit of mercury. But because of the way they're designed, they pass the tests where they don't meet the definition of a hazardous waste. And therefore, at the federal level, 
don't have to be managed as a universal waste. However, some states continue to manage these, uh, require their management as a universal waste. And I think it's always a good idea, better than throwing these in the trash. But that's my personal opinion on that point. So you would need to check with your state and or decide if you really want to throw fluorescent lamps in the trash, even if your uh, regulations, federal and state, allow for it. That is it. That concludes the, uh, the four different kinds of universal waste identified by the EPA. Next, I'm just going to sum up the, the universal waste regulations and some other requirements you need to know. Go. Okay, so there you have it. There are the four hazardous waste, types of hazardous waste, that the EPA allows you to manage as a universal waste. Now, there's more that goes along with it. Uh, there are certain container requirements, and there's marking and labeling requirements for those containers. And there's an on-site accumulation time limit of one year. And there's other requirements for informing or making your employees aware of their responsibilities when managing universal waste. And there's more, more than we're getting into here. Um, if you have any questions about that, again, contact me about the universal waste management requirements. Also, you should be aware that uh, these are the, the four universal waste currently identified by the EPA. They can add to it. Um, states are not required to adopt all those four, though most have. And, and this is the big one, states can add to those four if they want to. And some states have done that. So you may have more universal waste in your state than I just identified here. These are just the federal level, okay? Um, there was a federal proposal to add pharmaceuticals from healthcare facilities to the universal waste regs, but, and that was back in 2008. But that got changed to where now they're gonna make uh, an exemption to the hazardous waste regulations, specifically to pharmaceuticals. Um, but there are two states currently, Florida and Michigan, that do identify pharmaceuticals as a universal waste. So we've got these differences. So you really got to check with your state. So to be uh, aware of the hazardous waste regulations in your state, it, it really takes a lot of information, access to information and training. And that's what I do. So if you have a question um, about the regulations, federal or state, for the management of hazardous waste, universal waste, used oil, even non-hazardous waste, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you very much.